Okay, so this is going to be a quick video about the update on the Pine Watch software running Xprino. So, we've got this watch, which can be kind of hard to see. We have a backlight, uh, we have a button working, um, and if you do this, the touch works. So, currently it's hooked up to a Raspberry Pi Pico doing uh, serial wire debugging. Uh, so, and I'm just going to go through some of the code I'm working on um, and some general overview. Alright, so let's open up some browser. Quick overview of what the goal is. So, this is the main Bengal.js file. So, Xprino is the lower level JavaScript engine, and Bangle.js is what I imagine is a set of drivers and a state machine for watches, basically. So, what we have here is one large file with essentially everything that needs to run for the, the Bengal 1 watch and the Bengal, the Bengal 2 watch. So it's quite a lot. Um, and what I'm trying to do is move some of the device specific aspects away and just leave the state in the this file right here. Uh, and I also want to try to remove a lot of these if defines so you'll see a whole bunch of if this specific hardware or if this specific feature. So the goal is to reduce the amount of if defines and to migrate the hardware to a separate section so it's easier to see where the code actually is. Uh, and just just so so just that we're fully aware there's also another project that's trying to get a bangle like experience and that's on Thanush um, repo and he's got a whole bunch of watches and they have um, their own specific firmware but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to basically make the exact bangle OS OS more easy to add new watches to so we have here so basically what I've done is I've added a hardware directory and inside here each of the specific pieces of hardware will be uh, their specific code will be moved out of uh, JS wrap underscore bangle and then moved to this hardware section. So for the display we have a bunch of specific functions for turning off and on the LCDs and overlays and stuff like that. Um, same for the backlight. We have a bunch of backlight specific functions all migrated over here so each folder you know exactly what you're getting into. So inside of these functions you'll see um, that some of these functions have this attribute underscore weak and that's used for cases when you need to overwrite the default nature of the function. So each of these specific fold files will have specific code needed to run that specific device or run that specific hardware. So the goal is to basically streamline all of the code inside the main headers so you can see literally what's happening and have all the device specific code in these sub files basically. Um, what this sometimes requires is adding new functions so you'll see these default functions uh, and basically these are used when you need to when each of the devices has a unique way of actually handling this. So basically, let's see. Let's grab what was the one I was looking at? There's a good example what this usually okay, yeah, this. 
So many of the functions go through this like step where they manage some sort of state at the top and then they'll be wrapped around this emulated block. So this is for when you want to test your code on the website JS emulator. So there'll be this nice emulated section where the actual hardware will go. So then I basically just wrap before I would just have this entire code section here I've wrapped up the default action in this function which is probably going to be yeah right here so if someone needs to overwrite that they can just you know, define their much larger section here so removing all of this you know makes this more understandable on what's actually happening. Um, so to get this to work, to get these weak functions to work, you basically have to um, add these in uh, here. That's currently what I'm doing. You just put all these subfolders here and then this gets included in from your Bangle.js file or your Xbrino file, your board file. So this is P8 flash. So here is where you tell uh, you tell the build firmware that these files might have some JS inside them. So we just add this here and then this guy will link up all the other files. Okay, lib. And yeah, so that's that's basically the goal right now is to just move all this code into these subsections so then it makes adding the specific pine stuff a lot easier. So my goal is most of this stuff shouldn't, well at least I don't think it should be in this file. So this probably can go, all of this can probably go, except for this debug, I should probably stay. Um, and yeah, basically the core of the, the runtime for this Bangle.js is, should be inside this folder, um, which is this stuff right here. The hardware init is where basically the device gets set up. So all of the specific things with this hardware to get set up, like um, setting the I squared C lines, uh, setting up the buffers for the display and stuff like that. Um, and then this is where most of the actual hardware specific stuff, setting your IMUs and stuff like that. Uh, kills pretty easy. Um, idle is where your events basically happen. So, for example, touch has it sets all these tasks to do. So, the touch handler gets activated in this case by a pin that gets toggled up. It does some stuff in the background, and it's a in its um, event and then it sets up these tasks for to happen later and these tasks get handled in this idle section so if you we go into idle this task gets handled right here um, if you want to help out on this I can set up some we can set up some tasks or some chatting things. I've got a Discord. This is my name. It's Brendan A. Hashbang5231. We'll see how long it takes to finish this up. Oops.